Hello, my name is Chris Kiak with Kiak Technology Solutions. And in this video today, I'm gonna to show you how to do skewed shear tab connections, just like this. Here where we have a simple K1 cut, right where the radius starts, but a nice square cope going through the beam. And then we will be able to control the dimension uh, from the edge of the shear tab to the center of the hole, which is usually what you want to do on shear tab connections. Now I'm gonna actually just bounce over here to the same framing condition. These are at 45 degrees framing into the primary. And I'm gonna first try to use connection 146, which is the most common shear tab connection in Tecla structures. Now I'm gonna double click on this to open up its properties. In the dropdown, there's some out of the box settings called skewed. Now what it looks like that they've changed here is uh, to do this corner clip option um, on the flange coming into the primary. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna apply these settings and press okay and see what I get. So I'll pick the primary, pick my secondary, primary, secondary, and I always test um, the same angle like in different conditions and even uh, swap the member in sometimes just to make sure that the component is completely working the way I anticipate with different geometry. And that's why I even have like 30 and 60 degree angles here for tests as well. But let's start with the 45 degrees. Now the first problem here is that Usually I don't want to do this kind of bevel cut like shown. I tried to do that K1 cut and have a nice simple straight cope going through the web of the beam. And this here would have a bevel cut going in there. So it's a little bit more difficult for the shop to do. Although a lot of CNC machines today might be able to do this without any hassle or any problem. But if we want that old school kind of style, what you have to do is you double click, come in here, and usually I switch this to bevel. I'll leave the web uh, cut straight at the end, and then I'll do this corner clip here on the flange and say modify. Now at first look, this actually looks pretty good, except uh, the dimension to the first hole from the edge of the shear tab uh, using this dimension here doesn't always uh, exactly work out. Sometimes it's a 16th off, sometimes it's more. But one other problem is that I'm just getting this extra kind of meat here in the uh, cope. And so I'd have to go in and manually change the cope dimensions on the notch tab. So this is just a lot of work. I'm just doing a lot of messing around here that I don't necessarily want to do. So what I do is I actually don't use connection 146 for skewed shear tabs. And the connection that I use instead, so let me just go ahead and go back to plan view and zoom back in here. The connection I use instead is connection 35. So shear plate simple 35. And what we're gonna see here is that when we do a search for 146, uh, 35 will actually pop up as well. So if I double click on this, I'm gonna go to its skewed settings. So I'll, I'll load these. Again, these are out of the box US uh, office settings for the US environment. And so I'll load this up. I'll press apply here. And the key thing is that this skewed type two on the copes tab has been set here for the top and the bottom. And you may have to adjust this depending on whether there's a bottom cope or the beams are the same size like they are here, or if one beam's deeper than the other. But we're just gonna start with these settings and see what we get. So I'll pick the primary, I'll pick the secondary, I'll pick the primary, I'll pick the secondary. And this actually looks really great. There's that K1 cut. So how can I tell that it's going to the K or the K1 there? I'll just hold down shift and say show with exact lines. And we can see exactly where the radius starts on the top flange of that beam. And there we go, that corner cope uh, or that corner clip on the flange is there. And then there's a straight uh, cope going through the web of the beam, which is really good and easy for the shop. And that's the old fashioned way to detail these. Now, the other really key thing here though, is that there is very simple controls and consistent controls to locate the dimension to the bolt. And you do that here on the bolts tab. So what's different here between uh, this connection and 146 is I can tell it that edge distance to the bolt on the shear tab. So if I want this to be four inches and say modify, now what you'll see is that the end of the beam is keeping its inch and a half edge distance based on the dialog box, but it's adjusting the dimension from the edge of the shear tab to the center of the bolt group. So I just come in here and I just say perpendicular and you see that it shows four inch for that dimension, which matches exactly what I have in the dialog box. So there are two powerful things about this component. One, it allows you to control the consistency in your detailing and keeping your shear plates as similar as possible for skewed connections, where it makes sense and where the bolt is gonna be able to fit in here. But what it also does is it does this uh, skewed cut really nicely uh, for the corner and then does a nice simple square bevel, uh, or sorry, square uh, cope here going through the web of the beam. So that's the power of connection 35. Now the only unfortunate thing is that if you do like to turn on your radiuses here, so let's say I do a half inch radius for my copes, I'm gonna go ahead and select on both of these components at the same time. 
and we'll just modify. There is one small defect that I've reported to the support team that it uh, on one of the conditions here, it will not do that uh, bevel. It actually looks like it's putting it on the other end of the cope. So let me show you what I'm talking about. If I actually click on this here and we do wireframe, you'll see that there's a radius on that cope. It's just on the wrong side. Instead of being over here on the beam, it's actually on the other end of the cut. Whereas this one here for this other 45 degree beam, the cope comes in radius and everything looks really nice there. So that's uh, one small thing that I've just asked support about. You could always explode this and just kind of change the uh, corner clip there if you need to. Um, but it, it gets you a lot closer here with connection 35 than it would with connection 146. Now the last thing is that we might want to switch the shear tab side on this particular connection. That's really easy to do. You just come in here to parameters and you just change this side of the shear tab. Just say modify. And then again, it adjusts the geometry, still holds that four inches. The cope changes as required, the beam setback. But if we just measure this here and go perpendicular, there we go. We still have that four inch dimension exactly like what we had before. So that just shows you how connection 35 is a little bit more useful and friendly to the traditional style of detailing skewed shear tabs for beam framing to beam. Okay, so I'm over here in the drawing editor and I wanna showcase how you can actually use the automated integrated dimension rules within Tecla to get to the old school style of checker dimensions that you're used to for skewed shear plates. So if I zoom in here, um, a couple of things that I've turned on. First of all, I've turned on neighbor parts for just so you can actually see where the working point comes in to the, from the secondary to the primary. And you can see that Tecla is actually automatically dimensioning that. Now I've just got these in for reference. They aren't in the bill of material, but it's just so I can see the beam framing into this. And I'll show you how to turn that on and off here in a second. Now it looks like on the 30 degrees where the secondary is tight to the uh, primary to the beam here, um, you know, here towards the left end, it just added a couple extra dimensions that really shouldn't be in here. So it tried to dimension uh, to the work point of the main member, which isn't exactly what I need. So I'm just gonna go ahead and remove that. And uh, the only other thing I see on this one is that it gave this horizontal dimension all the way to the edge of the shear tab there, rather than just at the contact point. So that was a little bit surprising there. So I would just kind of move that to that point there and get that all set. And then maybe just uh, select on this one here Looks like it did it in both of these cases. So I'll say add remove dimension point and just go to that contact point there, go to that contact point there, and then I can remove these two dimensions here. So that looks pretty good. And then again, just update this one. And then now we've got that dimension there. Beyond that, this is actually pretty consistent. You know, this work point to work point dimension, that is something we used to do back in the day on the old school dimensions. Um, it pro I probably would have actually combined these two. It looks like it did uh, two separate dimension lines for this. So I'll say combine dimension line. So there's all my work point to work point dimensions. There is the diagonal dimension. Uh, so I think the only extra dimension for tr checking the trig would be that I'd add like this additional dimension here to the point. But that's the only thing that Tecla didn't put in in that diagonal but it's got this dimension here. So again, really, here's all the work point dimensions. Here's the running dimension to the contact point, which Tecla does that actually really good. Um, you can see the framing side mark here where the beam is coming in. And uh, then we've got basically the diagonal to the you know whole dimension for calculating things. And then again, I can also just say add dimension point here to that work point, and then there we go. Now I did a pretty good job on these other ones. Uh, when I actually look at this, it just gave that small dimension there to the work point and then to the contact point. So that actually looks really good. I've got my bevel symbols here, I've got my diagonals. And again, if I just wanna add that extra dimension for reference, I can easily do so. Now, how did I actually accomplish this? Well, a couple of things. First of all, I needed to actually save away the bevel dimensions if you want the bevel and the degrees. Um, what I had to do is if I double click on this, there are some save settings here called bevel for the dimension. And you just switch this to triangle with degrees instead of just triangle. And that's how I get both the bevel and the angle measurement shown, which is pretty traditional in old school detailing. Now to get all these extra dimensions and everything to show up where I got the running dimension to the contact point, as well as these diagonal dimensions, there's a couple of things that I needed to turn on. So I'm gonna double click on the background of the drawing, which will open up the assembly drawing properties. Then what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna see here that on the view creation node here in the tree view on the left, there's a top view and a front view that are being created. 
And what's great about version 2022 and newer is that you can specify which view properties that you want to be used for different types of views. So on the top view, you'll notice that I've created some customized save settings. So I'll just go ahead and select on that and press the view properties button a couple times here. And a couple things that I did. First thing is I'll talk about the neighbor part. So I actually came in here and I turned on uh, connected parts. So we can see here the parts that are framing into this. And I only wanted to show the main parts only of those pieces coming in. And so that's why I can see those beams here. And if you wanted those actually to just be on, but uh, you don't wanna see them print out, um, but you wanna see them here in the drawing, you can actually switch that to white. And then I could save that away and that way it shows up, but it just won't print out on that particular color. So that's one option that we can do there. But that's essentially how I showed the connecting members coming into this beam for reference. Now, the other thing that I did here is the dimensioning. So what I did is I created some saved properties here called skewed plate, but I am using the old school integrated dimensions, which has been around in Tecla for a long, long time. So I'm gonna edit this rule and show you a couple things that I changed inside of here. Well, the first thing is on the bolt dimensions. The bolt dimensions to get this uh, four and a half and the one and a half, what I did is on secondary part bolt internal dimensions, I just turned this to all. And what that did is it gave me all of the edge distance dimensions here showing uh, the shop exactly how to orientate this skewed shear tab so they would, don't put it in backwards. But that gives the full width of that and that dimension to the hole. So we have that dimension there. And then the other thing that I did is on the position dimensions tab, there are this position bolts to and position parts to. And there's a secondary a part. You can tell it to uh, tell Tecla to do the running dimensions and position the part by bolt, uh, or by bolt, or by the part. So if there is a hole or a bolt in the submaterial part uh, or the secondary part, then it'll try to give a dimension to that bolt or that hole. Otherwise, uh, Tecla will try to dimension it to like basically the left edge of the part. So I just switched this to by bolt. Um, we have the secondary part dimension direction to the neighbor part. We are positioning the, the part uh, basically from the work point here and not to the main part. And then I've set this position bolts to uh, both the work points and the main part. So that way uh, I have both set here so I can get a running dimension along the length, which is what's giving me this running dimension here. But I'm also getting those diagonal dimensions like that five and three quarter um, or this dimension here, like this three and a half from the work point to there. That's happening because again, I'm telling it to position from the work point and I'm telling it to position those bolt holes um, or the bolt dimensions here from both the work points and the main part. So it's really these key settings here. And then I just created some new save settings up at the top. And then I uh, have that reference in the view properties, created new save settings here. So I save that. And then here inside of the drawing properties where I'm telling it for top view, I'm using those view properties. So watch this, I'm just gonna go ahead and say recreate dimension and that'll get rid of uh, basically showing the neighbor parts. So if I just do color, you'll see that it's still there, but it just won't print out because I turned it on that white layer. But there you go, that just kind of shows you some extra um, kind of depth on the actual drawing properties and how when you uh, have those secondary members coming in and you change those dimensioning properties to both the work points and the main part, you can get those extra checker dimensions.